Hello everyone, my name is Silvia Hüttner and I would like to present a project that I did about exploring and visualizing the streets of Gothenburg. So a few years ago I moved from Austria, where I'm originally from, to Sweden. Streets in Vienna are mostly named after people, for example emperors and princesses, composers, authors, scientists, politicians and so on. And I noticed that was not the case in Gothenburg, where I moved to. Gothenburg is Sweden's second biggest city and located on the west coast. And in Gothenburg there were loads of, to me, funny and unusual street names. For example, I found a picture radio street and a butter street. And I just started to learn Swedish, so it was really fun to walk around and translate all these street names. So I found, for example, a trumpet street and a tomato street and a telescope street. And one friend of mine lived on Spring Onion Street and another one on Summer Weather Street. And yeah, I found that really interesting and fun. And not only did I find those interesting street names, I also found clusters of street names with similar names. There was, oh, sorry, clusters of streets with similar names. So there was, for example, one big space themed cluster and one where the streets were named after special days of the year. One area was entirely dedicated to musical instruments and another one to herbs and spices. And then about four months ago, a, a fellow member in the Elevate community, Nina, she posted in our Slack if anyone was interested in collaborating on projects about exploring and visualizing cities. So she wrote, the idea is to take a city that is close to your heart and explore it through all imaginable data sets. For example, types of street names, age of buildings, car crashes, weather, football, literature. So that sounded really fun. Up to that point, I had only used OpenStreetMap and Google Maps as a user. I had never made a map myself, but I thought it was a nice challenge to try and learn some new tools while also exploring some interesting questions. So my idea for a project was to explore the street names of Gothenburg in a bit more detail and see if there are more of these themed clusters and if streets that named after a common theme do in fact cluster to get together. Um, I didn't really have a clear picture in mind what the outcome should look like, but I knew I wanted to end up with some kind of map that can be explored, zoomed in and zoomed out, where streets can be different color depending on some criteria. I had heard of Mapbox, but I had never used it before, but it seemed to be the best and most commonly used tool for something like I wanted to achieve. So my simple workflow was as follows. First, I had to get a map of Gothenburg and information about all its streets with street names. Then I could go through these street names and put them into categories and then hopefully figure out how to visualize these categories or clusters on a map. To get a file with information about streets in Gothenburg, I used Overpass Turbo which is a web-based filtering tool for OpenStreetMap. So with Overpass Turbo, I highly recommend using the wizard to generate search queries. To, for example, search for residential streets in Gothenburg, you type in highway equals residential in Göteborg. You have to use Göteborg, the Swedish name of Gothenburg, otherwise it takes you to Gothenburg, Nebraska. Then you run the query, which can take a while because it's a lot of data. And then you can zoom to the data. And here we go. We have all residential streets in Gothenburg selected and could now export that data. And you see that there are still plenty of streets missing, for example, larger highways and industrial areas. So the query still needs some fine tuning to catch all of the streets. Overpass gives you the data in a GeoJSON format, which looks like this. And it includes both data about the streets, such as the names and the type of street, as well as the geographical information, so the coordinates. But I wanted to have the data in a CSV format, in a table shape, because I thought it would be easier to look through it in something like Excel or Google Sheets. And that conversion from GeoJSON to CSV is very easily done with MapShaper. 
The resulting CSV had over 60,000 rows, so it was much too big to open in Excel or Google Sheets. And the reason why there were so many rows is because most streets are divided into different fragments that all have their unique ID and geospatial information. So the number of rows was much higher than the actual number of individual streets. And there were also over 250 columns in this table because data from OpenStreetMap includes a lot of inform additional information. For example, about the surface of the street, if it's gravel or asphalt, about the direction, if it's one way or two-way street, if uh, what the speed limit is and so on. So there are many possibilities to explore and visualize <laughs> different things. But for now, I was only interested in the street names and I wanted to remove everything unnecessary. I did the cleanup of the data in Python with the pandas library, which is a really good uh, library for data analysis and data manipulation, especially for CSV and also for JSON formats. So I filled up this huge file for unique street names. So I would get only one row per street and that resulted in a much smaller file with about 6,000 rows. And I also removed almost all of the 250 columns that I didn't need. So now it was small enough to import into Google Sheets. <laughs> and then I went through this whole list of street names and I put the ones that popped out to me in different categories. It was a little bit tedious and I reworked the categories many times, but it was also quite fun and kind of meditative. You know, I would just sit there and scroll through the long list of street names and identify flowers and professions, animals, star signs and so on. And it was actually really good practice for my Swedish vocabulary. For a few things, I could actually use a query. So for example, for street names that start with doctor, but for all others, so for most of them, I had to do it completely manually. So already here, you can see the themes that I could identify. Some I grouped together. For example, there were a lot of instruments, instrument street, and also a lot of literature and art related streets. So I grouped those together into a culture cluster. And then there was also a surprising number of radio and airwaves and transmission technology related street names. So I made radio its own category. Then there was also a lot of food, mostly vegetables, fruits and spices, and also streets and paths named after colors. For example, Red Street, Blue Street, Indigo Street, Spectrum Street, and so on. So this took a while. Um, many hours over several days and I added, ended up with some defined categories. And now I added this category information to the list of street names in Python. And then I joined that list with the huge original data set from Overpass. Again, I used MapShaper for that. And this joining was necessary. So I would end up with one file with all the street names, the geographical information and my new category information. And then I exported the resulting file from MapShaper as a GeoJSON. And that was the basis for the map that I would make in Mapbox. So Mapbox, I found a little bit tricky to get into at first. It's not super intuitive, or at least it wasn't for me, but I figured it out by trial and error. Basically, what I ended up doing is I created a new layer for each category and then I only colored the streets that are in this specific category. For example, here for holidays, I set the filter for this data source to category and then I select a specific category, in this case holidays. So all streets with the category holidays will be colored in blue because I defined this here that it should be colored blue. And then here on the side, you see the underlying map of all streets and with the, go with the holiday category currently selected and highlighted. So then I went through all these layers and categories and defined the colors and so on. So that worked pretty well. And this was the final product. I was basically done with my project. I had an interactive map of Gothenburg that you could explore yourself, zoom in and zoom out and move around. And I had managed to highlight the street name clusters that I had identified in different colors. 
But then I thought I also want to tell a story and guide a reader along the way, especially readers that don't speak Swedish and would get more out of the project if the street names were translated. So as a last step of the project, I wanted to make a scrolly telling site that goes through the map in different stages. And Mapbox actually has quite a quite easy to use scrolly telling template or interactive storytelling, as they call it, that explains how to set everything up. So the first step is to download the package from GitHub and then to outline the story that you want to tell. So here's a screenshot of the story that I made where as you scroll through it, it zooms into different places on the map. So for all of these focus points that you have, you have to first define the map coordinates and then put those into the template file. So the, you zoom to the right places. So after the outline of this story was done, the next step was to write some text to create an actual story around it. And I didn't really know which streets or street clusters would be most interesting. So to find some fun facts behind the street names, I just started searching and digging into various local websites, Swedish Wikipedia and so on. And I came across some pretty amazing resources. For example, there's a website from the archives of Gothenburg City Museum that has information on location and history of all streets in Gothenburg. There are also loads of old photographs to certain streets and I even found out what the street that I used to live on looked like in the 1950s. One interesting story, for example, that I came across was related to the dairy cluster. So in the southeast of Gothenburg, there is an area with street names like Cheese Street and Butter Hill. And that's because in the 1960s, there was a big dairy factory located there. And there's still this huge abandoned underground bunker that belonged to the dairy factory and was intended to be used, according at least to some internet sources, as a national butter storage during times of crisis. So I'll let you explore the rest of the story yourself. I published it all on GitHub pages. So you just go to this link and you can scroll through the whole thing. And I also included all the links to the tools that I used, explanations and a detailed walkthrough of the construction process um, and a link to the complete map all at the bottom of that page. And as I mentioned, you don't have to know Swedish to enjoy the story. So thanks everyone for listening. And also big thanks to the Elevate team for inspiration and help and feedback during the creation of this project. Bye. Hi, Sylvia. Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for your talk. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was so wonderful hearing about um, how you put all the all that data together. I love the Butter Street and all the names. <laughs> yeah, that's one of my favorites. <laughs> okay, so I have a few questions for you. <clears throat> First off, it looked like you had to do so much data collection and data cleaning before you're even able to do the fun part of mapping it. Um, but you had mentioned that you found all the hours of data cleaning meditative. What in particular, what parts were you enjoying about the process? Um, I guess it was that uh, all these names, you know, bring up pictures in your head, mm -hmm. maybe some memories if you've been there, but also since all these names are quite, or not all of them, but a lot of these names are quite evocative, then, you know, you get some, oh, it's, it was just nice to get these ideas and pictures and uh, so on in my head. And um, as I said, it was also fun to to practice Swedish at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I found it to be, yeah, not unenjoyable, I have to say, but it took a little bit too long. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know if I caught all of the interesting street names. Yeah. I'm, I mean, there's a lot of stuff to comb through and you had to kind of manually do a good portion of it, but I could see how it would be really interesting as you're going through it and like um, how you're showing the dairy uh, kind of cave thing tunnel, <laughs> just thinking about how, all that stuff and how historical it is and what now it's a neighborhood, but it used to be a um, something for dairy, dairy farmers. So it's really cool to see how it history is interwoven into our street names. Mm, yeah. Um, if I were to do a project like this, like if I wanted to see clusters in my in my city is there a particular part of the data 
collection and cleaning that you feel like um, maybe like a tip you could give me to make it go faster? Because you said that it took longer. <laughs> it took longer than I guess you expected or had hoped for. Is there a way that it could be easier for someone um, to do it over again? Mm, so I had one idea and I don't know if that makes it easier, probably not. But since the most time consuming part was going manually through the list of names, I thought I was wondering if I could automate that in some way, you know, with some text recognition, language recognition um, thing that um, would recognize words that belong to a specific category that I could train on a data set, but yeah. then it just got out of hand. <laughs> and I didn't even start with that. It was just an idea that I briefly had. Um, so yeah, I don't think that would make it uh, easier. I think uh, I probably didn't do it in the most optimal way when I used Python and then Google Sheets. Mm -hmm. Since I mentioned Pandas uh, library, which is really good in also dealing with uh, JSON uh, files, I could have done it all in in Python, basically, mm. not go through Google Sheets. But since I found this easier to look at the data, I still went through this extra step. Yeah. But, yeah. You uh, kind of have to go with what you're comfortable with, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, Tamur had a great question. Was this circulated broadly in Sweden? Did you reach out to any public officials to publish it on the city's website? Um, I posted it on the on the Gothenburg subreddit. Ah. <laughs> it was quite a good response, and people were suggesting other clusters and street names that I had missed, and there was some discussion about the history of some of the street names and so on. So that was a really nice response. I also got a um, a message on LinkedIn from mm. a reporter from a local newspaper yeah. uh, that wanted to write about it, but I, I checked the message too late. <laughs> and then when I replied, uh, she didn't reply back. Oh. <laughs> but uh, other than that, I did not um, yeah, go out and publish it too much. Maybe I should have because it is um, yeah, a fun story. Yeah, it is. I bet you could pitch it to another, that same newspaper or a different one. Mm -hmm. And um I bet they would love it. Local local things like that, because like we said, you could kind of dig into the history of the city and everybody's interested in that. Mm. <clears throat> so about halfway through your talk, you said, OK, so now my project was complete. <laughs> and then you went on to add more, even more layers, making it this whole scrolly telling narrative. Why did you choose to add this extra layer of narrative? So it was, um, as I mentioned, with it started as a collaboration with Nina. Mm -hmm. um, and we had a lot of back and forth during our collaboration, even though we were not working on the same map and the same project. Uh, we were still collecting ideas in one common Google um, um, Google Doc. And um, yeah, we're just uh, brainstorming a bit what could be added. And she really thought that a scrolling addition would be uh, really nice. Mm -hmm. uh, and she convinced me that it was not too hard <laughs> to add that. <laughs> Uh, because as I explained, I hadn't done this before. So I thought, oh, this looks complicated. Mm -hmm. But once I had looked into it, it actually looked quite manageable. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, then I realized that the map itself is nice if you kind of know what you're looking for and you know Swedish and, uh, you know, you can explore it yourself. But since I wanted to point people to specific fun facts, mm -hmm. I thought that the scrolling selling would be a really good format to use that. Yeah, you're right. It's it's nice to be able to introduce people to the story and then mm -hmm. let them explore, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Silvio. So nice to hear about your project. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye.